And this is the Bolway MU12 4K mirror mounted dash cam. And on this video, I'm gonna show you all of these features, what you get inside of this box when you purchase one of these MU12 dash cams. And finally, I'll show you test drive footage, both at day and at night, so we can see how well this dash cam actually performs. And as always, I like to remind you that I have placed a link in the description down below to this dash cam in case you wanna get one for yourself. And now let's take a look at the Volvo MU12 4K mirror dash cam. And the Volvo MU12 mirror dash cam is of the 11 inch category, which I think is a nice in between of a 10 inch mirror dash cam and a 12 inch mirror dash cam. And as you can see, this is gonna look and act like a normal mirror until we turn the LCD panel on. At that point, this thing is gonna turn into a touch screen. And here's the back of the MU12 mirror dash cam. First off, we have a reset button right here, and then we have the main sensor. And Volvo says that they're using the Sony IMX335 sensor, and they have paired it with a 170 degree field of view lens. Now the sensor can also come out if we're trying to clear anything that's in the way of the view. And as you can see, they have sealed the back with this nice texture, so you're not gonna see anything if you decide to run the dash cam that way. But also the sensor can be further adjusted by moving this up and down side to side to further control the angle. Moving to the top of the dash cam, we have a power input in the form of a mini USB connector. Then we have the input for the rear camera, and then we have a memory card slot. This dash cam supports memory cards all the way up to 128 gigabytes. Finally, we have the GPS input. And in the bottom of the dash cam, we have a single power button and then we also have a microphone. But now let's check out the rest of the accessories. First off, we have the power supply for the dash cam in the form of a cigarette lighter adapter plug. And on the other end, we have that mini USB connector. And then we have the cable for the rear camera and the rear camera itself, along with some mounting hardware. And let's get this guy out. Now the cable is very long. It's approximately 23 feet in length. So plenty of length to route it in any vehicle, in my opinion and here is the rear camera. Now the rear camera is waterproof so it could potentially be mounted outside of the vehicle or inside of the vehicle and it has a little bracket over here and the way to mount it is either with the included screws or with the double-sided tape which is my preferred way of doing that. Double-sided tape is applied right here then I peel the back of that tape and then I can stick this to my vehicle. Then I can adjust the angle of the camera and then lock that position in place. We also get a GPS module antenna for the dash cam and the GPS module also has double sided tape in the back if I wanted to peel that and then stick this to my vehicle. And lastly, we get this goodie bag with a spatula, a microfiber claw and some mounting straps. Let me show you how these things work. And here's a standard car mirror and here's the MU12 mirror dash cam and the dash cam is gonna get placed on top of the mirror like so and then it's gonna be secured with the silicone straps. One strap is gonna go right here and then also secured in the bottom. The other strap is gonna go right here and also secured to the bottom, effectively mounting this to this, but also hiding the original mirror so you won't be able to see this anymore. Now they have included two sizes of straps depending on what size of mirror that this dash cam is being mounted to. And we get this user manual, which is in English, that shows us the different components of the dash cam, how it can be installed on the vehicle, the different ways to route the cables and the main features of the dash cam and how to use them. But now that I showed you the contents of this kit, let's move over to the vehicle so we can check out the rest of these features. And we'll begin with the startup test. And normally the dash cam is gonna turn on automatically. I like to do this manually so we can get an actual time on how long it takes before we see the rear view. And as you can see, we have on the upper left hand corner, a red blinking dot indicating that we are recording. On the right hand side, we have the day and time information and we also have our miles per hour or kilometers per hour if we had that setting. And if I tap on the screen, we can bring up a menu of different options. Let's begin with the one all the way to the further left. This mirror supports Wi-Fi and this allows me to turn the Wi-Fi on and off. Now that will allow me to connect to the app, which I'll show you a little bit later. The next icon is this little microphone icon. That allows me to stop recording of audio. So the video is still recording without audio. And if I wanna turn the audio recording back on, I can tap that microphone one more time. We also have a camera icon. Pressing that camera icon takes a picture in case we saw something of interest. So we'll have a picture in addition to the video that's being recorded. The next icon, which is this little dot, well, allows us to stop the recording. Notice that we are not recording. And if we wanted to resume the recording at any point in time, we can tap that button one more time. Moving over to the icon that looks like a little lock. 
This allows us to flag a video. Perhaps I found that car interesting and I want to take a look closer look in the future. I've tapped that, notice that this changed to yellow and it's going to allow me to find and locate that video among the many hours of video that are going to be recorded on this dash cam. And to view the videos, I'm going to press this little icon that looks like a little movie clip and that's going to bring up the playback menu. And as you can see, the videos have been sorted out into folders. We have the normal video and then we have the front lock video. The lock video is the video that we flag with the little icon. This is also where we'll find videos of any particular car crashes that we might have been involved with. We also have the rear video and we also have the rear photos and the rear flag video. Again, videos of interest or videos where we potentially may have crashed. But also let me show you how I change views and that is done by swiping on the mirror. Here we have the front view and then we have the rear view. If I want to swipe one more time, then I can see the front view. Swipe one more time, I see the rear view. And the views are further adjustable by dragging my finger on this side of the screen. We can have this view up or down depending on how much of the road or the side that we want to see. And the brightness is also adjustable by sliding on this side of the screen up or down if we wanted to lower the brightness. Now let's test out the parking assist feature. I'm going to put the car on reverse and as you can see the view comes down and now we have reversing guidelines which are helpful so we don't hit the curve when we're backing up and we have a couple of different presets to choose from. This is preset number four, preset number zero, preset number one, preset number two and preset number three which so far is the one that has worked best for my vehicle. So this is going to depend from car to car depending on the shape of your vehicle. And notice when I put the car back onto D, the view returns back to its original position. But now let's test out the voice control. Show front camera. Okay. Show rear camera. Okay. Show both cameras. And that is pretty cool. It's another way to control this mirror by using voice commands instead of tapping on the screen. And there's a couple of more voice commands to choose from, which I'm going to show you in a little bit. Moving over to the advanced settings of the dash cam, which I'm going to access by pressing the little gear icon. First off, we have resolution. I can run this dash cam at 4K in the front, 1080 in the rear, or 2.5K and 1080 in the rear, which is full high definition, or full high definition in both the front and the rear camera. And that is done if you want to fit more on your memory card. We also have a G sensor. Now the G sensor allows this dash cam to sense when you got into a car crash and when it senses that car crash it's going to flag the video of that car crash and lock it so you can find that later. You can turn this sensor off completely or you can enable this sensor with three levels of sensitivity low, medium, or high. This dash cam also supports parking monitor and that is enabled with this parking guard feature right here. However, Boltway recommends that this feature be used with the hardwire kit. And if this was hardwired, we can enable time lapse during parking mode. That means that the dash cam can continuously record video and compress that when you're away from the car. We also have a screensaver option. If we want this mirror to turn off after a period of time, but continue recording, we can set that screensaver on here. And that is convenient if you want nobody to know that this is an LCD mirror dash cam. But I mentioned that there are more voice commands to choose from, and you can see what those are by clicking on voice control. And here's the list of voice commands that this dash cam can recognize. And here's also where you can choose whether you want to have that function on or off. And I also mentioned that this mirror supports Wi-Fi and an app. And here you can see the barcode for that Wi-Fi and the password information so you can download it to your phone and then log in to the Wi-Fi mirror. But now let's connect to the MU12 using the Wi-Fi application. And I'm gonna click on this little icon right here and that is connecting to the dash cam and we are shown the from view. Now this is not meant to be used as a streaming dash cam but it's pretty neat to see that we are able to see a live view and if I click on this little icon we can change the view to the rear of the vehicle. So again this is a live picture that you're seeing coming from the dash cam and that's particularly helpful if you're trying to adjust the views of the dash cam as it's being set up. We can also choose to view the videos that are saved on the dash cam by using the video player on the left hand side of the screen. And here we can choose to play the videos directly directly off the dashcam or we can choose to save those videos to our phone for safekeeping. 
We can also select any particular view that we do not want and delete those if we no longer need them. We also have a photo player if we wanted to see any photos that we might have taken. I have only taken two, but you can see that those will be on here and you can also see them directly on this app or you can save them to the phone again for safekeeping. We can also access the settings of the dash cam with the little gear icon and here we can change the Wi-Fi name and more importantly, we can change the default password. And we also have access to some of the settings that I showed you earlier on the vehicle so we can change those directly from the app instead of interfacing with the dash cam directly. So overall, it's a pretty straightforward app to use. There's not a lot to it. Now, I do want to show you that if I exit from the dash cam, I am on the app menu. And here's so we can see the album of any particular videos or photos that we may have downloaded to the device. You can play them directly off the app or my preferred way, I just play them directly off my phone using its own built-in application for that. And now that you're familiar with the features of this dash cam, let's go out on a test drive so we can see how well it actually performs both at day and at night including the audio test and this is a sound test of the Volway MU12 mirror dash cam the sound you're hearing is coming from the microphone on the MU12 and I am sitting on the driver's side seat this is a sound test of the Volway MU12 mirror dash cam and the sound you're hearing is coming from the microphone on the MU12 and I'm standing outside the driver's side door And that was the Volway MU12 mirror dash cam. Now, who is this dash cam for? This dash cam is gonna be for those who wanna access their mirror dash cams with Wi Fi and an app. That feature is somewhat rare on dash cams today, so this is gonna be very convenient if you're wanting to constantly access videos on the dash cam or just change the settings throughout your phone. So, if you guys have any other questions regarding the Volway MU12 mirror dash cam, please put that in the comments down below. Remember, I put a link in the description to this dash cam in case you wanna get one. And if you found any part of this video helpful, hit the thumbs up button to support the channel. And stay tuned as I have a lot more dashcam reviews coming up. Thank you guys for watching, and as always, I'll see you on the next one.